Today's topic will be dashboard selectors. There's going to be multiple types of selectors that we're going to talk about. I'm going to use the same dashboard that we created in the templates and exports uh, demo. So I'm just going to go and edit it in desktop. We will see the first layer, the uh, one with the panel selector. Let's just take a quick look at it. This is the basic kind of selector which is uh, allowing us to toggle between the different panels. It's of type uh, select panel. There's little uh, information that you can play with here or little options and there's just the panel stack that you want to choose that you are controlling. That's the most important part of it. You can rename it, remove title, etc. or format. You could also uh, right click on the panel stack itself to see the different panels that were that you have in the panel stack that you will be selecting from in the editor you're not going to see the names of the panels in the selector only in the web you will see that the next thing we're going to do we're going to create a new layout and I'm going to explore the different uh, or the different the new uh, or the additional uh, selectors that we want to add so we're going to add a new bunch of selectors to our dashboard. I'm going to just use the same uh, grid from the data set. Just uh, add it here, resize it if you need to. Now let's start selecting selectors. I'm just going to use the icon to select the default selector and then edit it manually. You can also select them pre uh, from the drop down. But at any rate, let's give this a name, attribute. Um, this is for elements, so let's choose use the year uh, dimension. So I'm going to choose from years, and just make sure that select an attribute element is chosen. The source has to be the target that you're, I mean the attribute that you're selecting from. We're going to choose the year attribute, and let's just keep it as a drop down. Then you have the option to apply the selector as a filter and to keep the all option let's just use the all years as my all default and everything else is by default unset at this point because we haven't ran the report you can ma manipulate the targets if you need to if it's not being so if you're not selecting the correct one or you want to add selectors and you notice that there's a option to change from filter to slice uh, that means that can be enabled for all from up here uh, just like I'm doing right here where I'm going to show the total without a filter selection so it's going to convert all to slices we'll go back and convert it to a filter later on to show you how the how they work a little bit differently I'm also going to add another selector this selector is let's just use a metric condition for this selector uh, there's two ways to display it, but let's just start with the first one, which is the default or the slider. Let's just call this um, metric filter. Change the action type to a metric condition. You still need to define a source. Let's just use one of the metrics. Revenue looks good. All right. Let's just keep it default as a slider for now. We'll change it later on. Alright, most of these are not enabled and you still have the option to qualify on value or others, but you can change that at runtime as well. Choose the target and exit. Alright, so there we go. Let's just uh, save this and go and do the rest of our editing from the web. There's a few more options that you can control from the web and you can actually start to get a feel of uh, of how your selectors are operating and how they look in the web. So it might be a good idea to switch to the web at some point so you can continue your editing. Let us run our dashboard. Keep the prompts simple. Alright, there we go. There's our year drop down. All years and a total option. Select uh, any year you want, or the all years will show you all the different years, one after another. The total obviously sum up or roll up the values for all the years available. In this case, we had three years of data. Okay. Second, we have the slider. 
this is just a, a slider that you can drag and drop from either end you can manipulate or change whether we wanted it by volume or by rank including or excluding okay so that was the basic uh, or the default implementation if you go into edit edit mode we can continue to modify this remember I said there is a slide option and there's the uh, qualification option if you want to get more particular you could change that and now you use the qualification depends on your needs one or the other could be more beneficial this one is squished let's move it to a different location so we can actually see it resize it alright there you go so it's revenue less than or equal to a value um, I'm gonna change the value 15,000 and apply there you go it's uh, just returning those values that are less than or equal to 15,000 in the year 2010 or greater than and reapply and there you go so that's the qualification uh, metric condition let's uh, look at some of the formatting options that we have there's tons of them but just the uh, high level you can manipulate the color and uh, selector color this is uh, effective in the uh, flash view it's not really effective in the DHTML the interactive view in this case let's just choose something like white which can show on blue show well on blue obviously it's not going to show here because this is the DHTML but if you go to the flash view you will see this uh, selector now with the white font and the blue background and the light blue selection alright let's go back now if you're using the DHTML or the interactive mode you might want to change the color back to something that you can see in this case would be uh, black would be a good color so let's go back to edit mode and um, manipulate the formatting you can play a lot with these different formats to get the right colors for your specific theme and uh, just you know make sure you're always testing it which is why I advise you to use the web when you're doing the coloring and the editing the final touches you might want to start with the basics at the desktop All right. so uh, alright let's just uh, edit a little bit more let's maybe add another selector let's add another selector okay let's use the checkbox this is a good one for choosing from different metrics so let's change this so now I'm adding from the web just similar to the desktop uh, just call this a you know, metric selector or metrics and yeah I can keep the default positioning etc well let me use for vertical because I have it on the side let me choose my targets so this is a select metric and the target is the grid right obviously this is always applied in one way there's no filter or non-filter option but there's an all if I want all the metrics to be displayed in one button or in one click again you can do the formatting that you desire and once you're done just go back okay there you go now you can select whichever metric you want to display in your grid or you can display, display all of them Let's just select all to show all the metrics if you select all metrics again as I showed you here it is going to so, show you uh, both metrics I'm going to move here to the side and actually let's move it off the grid so I can show you something remember we talked about the filter and the slice option for the year uh, selector let me show you how this plays a role see the old years now watch what happens here without the year it's gonna duplicate for every one of the items including the total that's why you're seeing four which is not probably not the operation you want so in this case where you know you're missing an attribute 
then the slice becomes uh, detrimental to your purpose and you want to use a filter what the filtering does it removes it before rendering the data uh, versus the slice where it's just showing you a window of the data and this way you get the correct roll up that you want so again be careful about how you choose your selector types and how they interact now let's do one more thing let me um, let me show you how to use a an attribute as a selector first let's prepare this let's uh, make a copy or a duplicate of this uh, report and then I just need to uh, remove these two attributes let's just keep the lowest level in this case was the subcategory and I'm going to shrink this and move it to the side and just drag and drop or just uh, drag and move should be good enough okay let's go to the other or the, the one in the background the main grid or the parent grid I'm just going to resize this as well yeah just let's remove the subcategory first and then resize just going to click on it and drag it from the corner that sound looks good right here okay and let's move this one to the side great now we got them stacked one has the category region one has the subcategory level but I want the one grid to act as a parent uh, first of all, let's make sure that the metric selector is applied to both of them so we can get, uh, get a consistent look. But I still want to make sure the subcategory is controlled by the sales by region, the parent category. So what do I need to do? Well, let's just go here and uh, actually before we do that, let's remove the drilling so we can make sure that there's no underlining under all the attributes to prevent drilling from the parent grid. It's just simple. Let's go here and remove, yeah, change it to no drilling. Great. So now we don't have underlines for drilling from the parent. We only can drill from the uh, subcategory in the next grid. But now I can go ahead and edit and add as a selector for the category. And I'm going to choose the target or the child as the next uh, grid I could have renamed it but the default was grid graph alright now we have underlines and I can click on the categories and look at the right side they are changing so for electronics 2000 or for electronics all years we have different categories subcategories and we can drill in different directions or just click and drill to the report One last thing I wanted to show you here. Let's go to the formatting here. And let's try to select the default. We'll show you how you can select defaults. You can, uh, for something like an apply as a filter, you don't have that option. But when you have a slice, you can use the first or the last, one or many. And that way, when you save the report and run it, it'll always run with the first. Alternatively, you could manually select and then save and your last selection before you save would be by default the first thing that will be selected so if we go back there we go that was 2011 and electronics was selected in the category uh, obviously if there wasn't any data there was an option there to say up refresh it to show uh, data and also you can edit the selector and manipulate it add more or remove or modify and actually or disable the selector in itself okay thank you very much for uh, watching this demo and I'll see you next time